Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In this video, I'd like to keep working on the Autodesk model engine project by grabbing the next component that I'd like to do. And that component is going to be the engine case left hand. If I right click and choose isolate, we can take a look and see what this part is. I'll put a link in the description to the Autodesk project page for this particular component so that you can download the data, the solid models, the 2D print, all the information that's associated with this. In addition to watching what I show you how to model this in this video. This is half of the engine case. If I turn on the other side of the engine case, you can see these components mount together. And in the recess is where the crankshaft is gonna live. So now that we know the part that we're working on, I'm going to close out of this file and I'm going to hop into a new file. And the first thing I'm going to do is choose to save this. And I'm going to call this engine case left hand. And I have it saved into my model engine folder and I'll hit save. And I'm going to make a new component to start with. And I'm going to call this component case left hand and I'll hit OK. Now I wanna make sure this component can't move around. So from the assemble menu, I'm gonna do an as-built joint between the case and the origin, and I'll hit OK. And if I don't wanna see that symbol, it's pretty faint right now, but if I don't wanna see it at all, I can just turn it off underneath my joints folder, or I could turn my joints folder off as well. I'm ready to start making my first sketch. I'm gonna create a new sketch, and I'm gonna put that new sketch up on the top plane. And my first shape is going to be a rectangle, a center point rectangle, and I'm gonna to anchor to the origin. And for the height, this is gonna be 0.9375, and I'll hit tab. And for the width, it's gonna be 2.375 in width, and I'll hit enter. I can see my sketch is fully black and defined, so I am ready to move on to the next step. I'll hit finish sketch. And now I can start the extrude command, and. According to the print, I'm gonna extrude this up 1.4 inches. And I'll hit OK. Next thing I might do is, I think I'm gonna put the fillets on like I've been doing on the other files. So I'll choose the fillet command from the modify toolbar and I'll click on these two edges and the radius is gonna be 0.25. And I'll hit OK. Now I'm ready to do the recess on the front of the part. I'm gonna create a sketch on the front face and I'm gonna start out using the line command. I'm going to anchor somewhere to this hop, top horizontal line and I'll click and I'll come down a little bit and when I'm happy with my location I'm going to left click and hold and that'll allow me to swing into an arc. When I'm happy with the location I can stop left clicking and now I can drag straight up and when I click on the next line we can now take a look at the basic shape I have and do a little evaluation on it. I know both of these lines are vertical because they're perpendicular to the top horizontal line. I can also see that I have a tangent constraint here, but I don't have one over here. So I'm gonna grab the tangent constraint from the constraints menu and I'm gonna click on the line and the arc and now I've got that fixed. I wanna make sure that the center of this arc is exactly centered on my part and I'm gonna do that by using the horizontal vertical constraint between the center of the arc and the origin point and that will now vertically align that. The next dimension I'm gonna put on, you're not gonna find on the print. I actually had to open the 3D model to figure this one out. So it looks like that one was missed on the print, at least for many, or at least for making it, modeling it. It could still be manufactured and checked though. I'll grab the dimension and I'm gonna click on the bottom line. And now if I grab this arc, when I move my mouse over it, notice it highlights the center point. And if I click, I'm going to get the bottom of the line to the center of the arc, and that's not what I want. So to get what I want, I'm going to right click and choose pick circle arc tangent. And now when I click on this arc, it'll give me that dimension that I want. And that's going to be 0 0.0875. And I'll hit enter. One more dimension I have to do is across this the two vertical edges and that dimension is going to be 1.375 and I can hit enter and that's going to wrap up the sketch that I need to create this recess. I'm going to finish my sketch and I will choose the extrude command and select that profile, drag the direction I want to go and I can enter in minus 0.5 for the depth of that cut and that recess is done and ready to go. I've got a couple holes on the face of this part. One is just a plain hole and the other one's a tapped hole. I'm gonna create a sketch on the front face, and like I normally do holes, I'm gonna drop in a couple points. 
So I'm gonna put a point here and a point here. Don't need to be too careful with it. I want these two points to be vertical aligned to each other. So I'm gonna choose the horizontal vertical constraint and click on the two points. It doesn't matter which one you click first or second. And now I'm gonna start the dimension command and I'll click on the left edge and the, one of the centers of the points. I'll define that as being 0.25 inches according to the print. And then I'm gonna click on the top horizontal line and the bottom point and that distance is going to be 0.7. And the next one is gonna be from the top horizontal line to the point. And this distance is gonna be 0.25. Let me verify that on my print to make sure I have that right. And that is, yes, 0.25. So I'm fully black and defined. Where I put these sketch dimensions doesn't really matter. This is more of an organizational thing for me if I ever have to come back to the sketch and look at it. So I like to place things logically so that it's just easier to understand when I come back and edit a sketch. I'm gonna finish the sketch and now I can start the whole command and I'm gonna choose this point. This point is gonna be a plain eighth inch hole that's 0.1875 deep. So I'm just gonna, it's set to simple and it's simple for both the hole type and the hole tap type, which is what I want. For the depth, I'm going to enter in 0.1875, and for the diameter, I'm going to say that this hole is 0.125 in diameter, and I'll hit OK. When I do, the sketch I use to create that disappears. I need that for the other hole, so I'm gonna expand out my case left hand, expand out the sketches folder, and turn on the visibility of that last sketch. Now I'll grab the hole command and I'll click on that point. This is going to be a tapped hole. Its distance is going to be 0.5 inches deep. The It's gonna be a ANSI unified screw, and the size is going to be a quarter and it's gonna be a quarter 20, so I'm happy with all those things, and I'll hit okay. And I have one more tapped hole I have to do. I can turn off my sketch. I don't need to see the visibility of that anymore. And for this one, I can just use the hole command and select this face. Now I'll drag the blue dot to the center dot, which is the center of that fillet that I created. And for this, it's gonna be a distance again. The depth is gonna be 0.375. It's gonna be a tapped hole as well, so all that is correct but this is going to be a number 10 and the thread designation is going to be 1032 and now I can hit okay. So I've got my holes placed in there. I just need to get those holes to the other side and to do that, I'm gonna use the mirror command. I have to look to see what Fusion wants me to mirror. Right now it wants me to mirror bodies. I want to hit the drop down and choose features. I can choose the features on the model, or I could go to my timeline and say I want this hole, this hole, and this hole, and they'll all highlight. For my mirror plane, a couple ways you can select the mirror plane. You can see that it's completely inside of the part. So I'll show you two ways you could do that. One would be to turn off the bodies folder, and now you can click on that mirror plane fairly easily. The other way would be to left click and hold when you're approximately in the area. And now if I stop left clicking, I can just cycle through the choices until I get the plane I want, which is that YZ plane. I'll click on that. And now I have those holes mirrored to the other side. I'll hit okay. And that wraps up the modeling of this part. So hopefully you guys found this one useful. This was a pretty straightforward exercise in doing this. We're gonna, in a probably a few couple weeks from here, from now, we're gonna do the other side of this along the way. And for that one, there'll be a couple more small details we'll have to add, some minor differences between the two, but it'll be basically the same workflow. Hope you guys liked the video and seeing how I approached modeling this part. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you found it useful, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up or even consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching.